guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. Now I know this might seem like not the normal way to start off a vlog, but this is not a normal vlog. It's very different. It's probably not the kind of content that you guys are used to seeing on my channel, but it is probably one of the most important videos that I will ever film. And I'm so excited and proud to be part of this campaign. So Public Health England have asked if I would be part of their Cervical Screening Saves Lives campaign. Obviously, I said a massive yes, because after hearing about the campaign and what it stands for and what it's trying to do, I couldn't help but basically want to be a part of it. So the Cervical Screening Saves Lives campaign is all about encouraging everyone to go and get their cervical screening test done. Now, unfortunately, this is at an all time low, which is just such a shame to hear because it is something so small that can save so many lives. A statistic that I learned while reading about the campaign was that two people die every single day from cervical cancer. And I personally feel like that is completely unnecessary when it is so preventable by going and having your cervical screening done. That is exactly why I wanted to vlog my whole experience of getting my first ever cervical screening done. Basically, to just hopefully make you guys aware of the fact that it's not as scary as we all think it's going to be. And it's something that we need to all get done, basically. So, with that being said, I will stop talking about it now and let you guys watch the vlog. But just want to say a really quick thank you for watching this video because it is really important. So, I hope it's useful and I really hope you guys enjoy watching. Um, I've actually woken up feeling really nervous. I was like a little bit apprehensive last night and then this morning I was a bit like, oh my God, it's actually happening today. So I feel a little bit like, it's just the fear of the unknown, which I think is the reason why everyone is scared of going to get this done because it's just so unknown. If it's your first one, you don't know what to expect. You don't know what's gonna happen. And actually for me, as funny as this sounds, I think the thing I'm most nervous about is the whole like just lying there with no underwear on like with your vagina just out like i know that sounds so weird but like that's like weird. i don't know that's what i feel most nervous about the actual test itself i'm not that worried about i've got quite a high pain threshold if it's gonna hurt i you know i'm not worried about that as such i mean ask me later and then see if i was worried about it but yeah it's more the kind of like getting naked in front of someone which i know she's a doctor and i know that she's seen so many vaginas over her time and it sounds so weird being worried about that but that for me is actually the thing i'm most worried about so anyway so i'm going to the gym now i thought i'd just go and do a workout try to take my mind off it and yeah and then i'm gonna go and head to the doctors and see what the deal is i get the sun is super annoying but i'm basically outside my doctors now so it's happening guys it's all getting very real i'm trying to like stay calm because i know it's going to be fine and everyone does this or well not enough people do this but you know lots of women get this done so it's, it's going to be fine and my doctor's really lovely and she's a woman so i'm sure she's going to make me feel very very calm about the whole thing but no so i'm going to go in and get it done and then i will fill you all in on the other side wish me luck <laughs> Okay, so I am back from having my cervical screening done. I actually can't believe it's like over and done. All that kind of like anxiety and stress and worry, it's just over now and it's just done. It's mental. First things first, my God, it is nowhere near as bad as I think we all have it like amped up to be in our heads. I mean, I don't know what I was expecting, but it was so simple, so easy. And it's almost like shocked me just actually how like simple and quick it was. So I'm just gonna run you through basically exactly what happened from the moment I walked into my appointment to when I left. So I arrived at my appointment and I went in and it was with the doctor that I always go to. So like most girls, I specifically wanted a woman to do it, but my doctor is a woman anyway. So that was good. But you can always specifically ask for a woman if you have a male doctor, but you want it to be done by a woman. I'm sure that's not a problem. So yeah, so I sat down and she was basically, she just explained to me why we do the cervical screenings, um, and which I won't actually tell you because um, my interview with Dr. Sarah at the end of this vlog will explain more detail about that. But that's what she does. So she sat down and she explained to me about cervical screenings, why we get them done, um, what they're looking for, and the reasoning as to why they are so important for us to go and get them done. She then 
didn't ask me any questions about like my periods kind of like the history of my periods like are they regular do I ever experience any kind of like breakthrough bleeding just basically anything there's a little bit irregular maybe about my periods so I basically explained you know anything any issues I've been having and then she also asked like do you ever experience bleeding during sex or before sex and all this kind of stuff so it kind of leads you up to like the examination that she's going to perform so then basically I moved over to the bed and she was just like she closed the screen and she was like if you just want to take your bottom half off and lie on the bed with your knees up so obviously the, this for me was the scariest part because this is the bit where I was going to be naked but I think by the time that you'd had this conversation about kind of like everything and she, I mean most doctors really do put you at ease and obviously she's a lovely doctor so she you know makes you feel really calm so yeah so I was just lying on the bed and she closes the curtain so you can kind of take your stuff off like in a bit of privacy and then you just lie on the bed and so she comes in um, and then yeah so she gets you to put your knees up and just open your legs which I know is obviously like a little bit crazy but I think by the time I was lying there I didn't feel like weird it just kind of was happening then and it was I was actually kind of a bit more relaxed to actually just be there so to start off with she did um just kind of an examination of my um cervix area she kind of t wanted to check the neck of my womb just to check that everything was okay and there was nothing kind of that she could feel that was like not normal and she said that everything was fine so that was good so then obviously next came the cervical screening so she pulled out the speculum that they used to do the screening with and basically at this point she was just like you just need to relax and i think that is quite important in your screening test just remember to relax because actually the more relaxed you are just the more comfortable it is going to be so I was just trying to you know take deep breaths and just think about other things she talks to me about just anything and everything kind of during this as well it's being done so to kind of take my mind off it and yeah so this speculum is inserted and I can't say that it was there was definitely no pain I didn't have any pain it's just you know it's an obvious feeling that something is inside your vagina. And then the speculum is opened up and you can feel it opening, but again, it's not a painful feeling. You can just feel something in your vagina and your vagina is opening. At this point, if anything, it just feels quite drafty. I'm not gonna lie. There's just a lot of wind, you know, it's a bit windy down there really, because obviously you're just open. There's really no other way of putting this than quite graphically, so I'm really sorry about this. And then, yeah, so she gets a little brush, and then this was a bit that obviously I think most people are scared about. And this feels like, this, I've got to say, no pain. It's just an uncomfortable sensation, but, so it's not painful, it's just a weird sensation. It feels like a scratch, but not like a painful scratch. You know if you scratch your arm, like hard, it's not like that kind of scratch. It's just you're aware of obviously something moving inside of you and the only way to kind of describe it is a little bit like a scratch but I feel like the scratch word makes you think that it's painful but it's not and then she takes it out takes the speculum out and then she leaves she she left me she put the swab thing in a little container and then she gave me some paper towel to kind of just like clean myself up if I needed it and then yeah she closed the drapes I got changed and then just finished, came out, and we just chatted about it a bit more. And then she was like, we'll send this off to get your results. And yeah, and that was it really. So honestly, I, I can't even believe just how simple and non-painful and non-scary it was. It was just so... It felt just like so normal to just go and get it done. It wasn't like a, something that I was like, oh God, I can't, can't believe I've got to have this done every three years. It was sort of like the next time I get invited, I'm just going to book straight away and just go. It was just so simple. So with that being said, if you've had your invitation and you haven't booked yourself in, just do it. I know that it was, it's a scary thought because I felt like that, that way. But take it from someone who has just been, and this is my reaction straight after, it is nowhere near as bad as you think it's going to be. So I'm just heading off to my Q&A that I've got set up with Dr. Sara, which I'm really, really excited about. She is gonna answer all the questions that you sent to me on my Instagram story, all about the cervical screenings, um, and hopefully, uh, we're going to go along today and we're going to all understand a lot more about the importance of getting the cervical screening done and also understanding kind of like the medical stuff behind it. So I'm excited to go and learn some things. So I hope you guys are as well. So yeah, so let's go and do it. 
So guys, I am joined here by the lovely Dr. Sarah, and she is gonna be answering all of your questions that you've got on cervical screening. As I said earlier, you guys all sent them in on Instagram stories, so thank you so much for doing that. You sent in loads of really interesting ones. I'm hoping that today we can cover it all and maybe answer some myths and kind of like just make everyone feel a little bit more comfortable about going and getting their screening test done. So first question is, why is cervical screening important and how does this benefit me? Cervical screening is one of the best ways we have to protect against getting cervical cancer. We know that two people in, the, in England die every day from cervical cancer. That baffled me, that like statistic. I just didn't realise that it was that serious. Yeah, it's horrendous and it's something that's so preventable. Yeah. Cervical screening is one of the best ways we have to protect yourself against cervical cancer. Cervical screening can save 5,000 lives a year, so it's an incredible number. We just really need to protect against getting cancer, you know, stopping it before it can start. Does cervical screening only test for cancer? The cervical screening doesn't actually test for cancer, it's there to test to prevent cancer. Okay. So we're, we're looking at changing cells on the cervix. Now the cervix is the entrance to the womb from the vagina. And if there are changing cells or any abnormalities, we can then monitor it and treat it to then stop cancer from developing. So how often do you need to go for your cervical screening? If you're registered with the GP and you're aged between 25 and 49, you'll be invited every three years. From the age of 50 to 64, it'll be every five years. But sometimes you can be invited for your first one up to six months before your 25th birthday. And if you get that invite, go for it. Yeah, because that was actually something I learned because I got invited from, I'm not 25 yet, and I just was under the impression you had to be 25. And when I asked, they were like, no, 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 as soon as you've got your letter, you can go. So that was really good to know. What happened during the procedure, which I think is the one that everyone's most interested in? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, the doctor or the nurse should be explaining it to you beforehand anyway and asking you about any questions or queries, but essentially what it will be is um, you go into a private room, the door will be closed, they'll ask you to remove your bottom half, so if you're wearing a skirt or a dress, just pull down your knickers and then they'll ask you to lie on the bed, they'll put a nice little sheet on top of you, um, and then they'll ask you to bend your legs, um, keep your feet together and open up your knees and then they insert a small um, smooth tube type of device it's called a speculum mm -hmm. um, and that's inserted slowly um, and then it's opened up so that we can have a look into the cervix and then a little soft brush is used to take a few of those cells from the cervix it's then gently removed and you're left to get changed in peace. So Dr. Sarah has actually just decided that she would show me what the Spectrum? That was speculum. Speculum, there we go, that's my doctor language coming out very well there. Um, so she can actually show us what it looks like so you guys can get a real understanding of exactly what the kind of equipment looks like. Because I know that was something for me that I was really nervous about because I've got no idea what it looks like. So take it away. So this is an example of off a of speculum. As you can see, it's, it's, it's pretty small, smooth. Essentially, this goes in through the vagina and then they just slowly open up. It's actually just around. <laughs> we then slowly open up just enough so that we can see through into the cervix. And then the brush goes through, Ooh, but I'm using my left hand, so <laughs> not very elegantly. And then you just take a few cells, so you brush it like that, round and round, and then it comes out, and that's it. And, and so the things that they test are then on the end of this? Yeah, year. so the cells are all taken, they're all at the end of this. We then put it in a little pot, swish it around, to send that pot off, Yeah, and it's done. Do you mind if I just fill this? Yeah. So, oh my God, that's so soft. That is not what I was expecting to that to feel like at all. It's like really, really soft. Yeah. I thought that was going to be hard, but it's not at all. No, it's a soft bristle, yeah. it's a smooth speculum, so none of these things should be hurting. Amazing. Is it always a female doing the screening test? It's often a female nurse or a doctor, but if you're at all worried, you can always speak to your GP beforehand and, and request that it is yeah. a female. Yeah, because that's something I did, guys. I made sure that it was a female that was doing it because I, like many of you, was concerned about that. And I just, when I rang up the doctor, I just said, can I please make sure it's a female? And, and that, that's all you need to do, really. But generally, what's the pain slash discomfort like during the screening? Everyone's experiences of cervical screening is different. Most people would say it's just uncomfortable and not painful. Is cervical cancer genetic, or are you more likely to be at risk if your mother or sister has had trouble before? Cervical cancer is not thought to run in families. 
We know that most cases are due to the human papilloma virus, so HPV for sure. 80% of women will have this virus at some point, so it's very common. It lives on our skin, so we can get it through gentle skin-to-skin -skin contact. It's a really common virus. In most cases, it will clear on its own. Do you still have to go for the cervical screening if you are a virgin? So, as I said, because it's uh, mainly caused by the HPV, and that's caused by gentle skin-to-skin -skin contact. If you are a virgin and have had no sexual contact, you don't have to go for the cervical screening, but you can if you want to. Yeah. You have to remember that you know sexual contact can include things like oral sex, sharing sex toys, and skin-to-skin -to -skin contact in the yeah. genital area. So it's not just vaginal penetrative sex. Yeah. If you have had the cervical cancer vaccine, do you still need the screening? Yes, you do still need to go for your cervical screening. Uh, the HPV vaccine does protect against 70% of the cervical cancer causes, but there are lots of different types of HPV virus, and we can't protect against all of those, so it is really important to go get your cervical screening done when that invitation comes. What are the main symptoms of cervical cancer to look out for? So in some cases, it doesn't have any symptoms. A lot of people will have nothing until it gets too late. But there are some cases where you can get symptoms, and in those, the most likely symptoms are irregular bleeding patterns. So you can get bleeding in between your periods, bleeding before or during sex, or if you've already gone through menopause, you may start bleeding when ordinarily you wouldn't have. Some people also get a change in their discharge or they can get a pelvic pain or a lower back pain. Okay. But again, you may have nothing. So if you do have any symptoms, just see your GP. Yeah, yeah. Can I have a screening if I am under 25? So the answer is no, but it is based on a lot of stats and science. So we know that cancer, cervical cancer is rare in the under 25s. We also know that that is the group that have changing cells within their cervix and it often changes and then reverts back to normal. So we know that the benefits of having the screening test is usually outweighed by the risks. What would you say to anyone who's worried about going? Cervical screening is one of the best ways we have to protect yourself against cervical cancer. It saves 5,000 lives a year, so I would suggest you just need to go, get your screening done when you're invited, stop cancer before it starts. So you can find out about cervical screening on the NHS website, so just search NHS cervical screening if you want any more kind of answers to any more questions that maybe we haven't covered. But thank you so much Dr Sari, you've answered so many of everyone's questions, I've learned a lot and I really hope that you guys have learned more about cervical screenings and also it has maybe made you feel a little bit more comfortable about going and getting yours done. So I'm just going to jump in here just to end the vlog off. I want to say a big, big thank you for watching. As I said at the beginning of this video, it is so important, this campaign. And I really, really hope that this vlog has encouraged any of you who may have been putting off their cervical screening to go and get it done. Don't ignore the invite. Cervical cancer is so preventable as long as we all go and get our cervical screenings. So please, just go and get it done. It is not as bad as you think it's going to be. And thank you for sharing my first experience with me. I mean, you know, it's not it's not every day that you get a vlog or cervical screening experience. So thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you go for yours. I'd love to know, just kind of like, or even if you just want any kind of words of encouragement before you go, drop me messages on Instagram, anything like that. But I will see you all in my next video. Bye, guys. Anyone needs to speak, just let me know. It's completely fine. We can uh, we can be interrupted. That's not a problem. Okay, right. I am on the right page. So, guys, I am joined here by the lovely Dr. Sarah, and she is going to be answering all of your questions that you've got on cervical screening. As I said earlier, you guys all sent them in on Instagram stories, so thank you so much for doing that. You sent in loads of really interesting ones. I'm hoping that today we can cover it all and maybe answer some myths and kind of like just make everyone feel a little bit more comfortable about going and getting their screening test done. So, with that being said, we might as well just get straight into it. Yeah. So, first question is, why is cervical screening important and how does this benefit me? 
It is so important because it's our main way to protect against getting cervical cancer. Yeah. So we know that two people in England die every day from cervical Which, cancer. Which, that baffled me, that like statistic. I just didn't realise that it was that serious. Yeah, it's horrendous and it's something that's so preventable. Yeah. Uh, you know, the cervical screening campaign will help prevent 5,000 deaths every year from cervical cancer. So yeah. I think it's one of those things that we really need to try and promote. So stop cancer before it can even start. Yeah, no, exactly.